okay in the same way it will work the breakpoint also works in the same way like this set default and together if you execute also you get the same output python space the file name so instead of executing both together so we can go with that now there is one more function called as ipdb the same thing it will work but in a slightly better way it is same like what you see the difference between python id and uh, ipython like that ipdb so this also we used along with python only uh, python scripts only how do you work with this pipe uh, ipdb if you want to install any module this won't come by default so we need to install it for installing it we need to first do like pip install hyphen u means update if it is already installed update for this specific user if i do this command it will install and then you can notice it okay so as it was already installed in my system so you don't see any installation but else you can see it so i want to use this assignment for working on another module this time i want to work on something for creation so i am using ipdb instead of pdb ipdb dot setrace so these are two also we can do it in the same line like others so same like in the previous program uh, i want i know the problems as 200 problems are there right so i create the problem that only 0 to 100 and i am saying like this this time say uh, i want to print all the even numbers sorry odd numbers okay so how do you print the, all the numbers print all odd numbers so this is what my agenda here how do you print the odd numbers so in duco c it was updated also and it is showing something okay you see now if i say python space c so and so ipdb as it did the debugger in the starting line itself so you can see interactive mode coming from there in previously you have seen pdb pdb is not good at the U, in ui better way so whereas ipd is much more smarter than that so that's why you can see the ui is also very different same like there here also we can do hr help you get the same old steps but slightly something more also you can get than what it is and if i say like list did you see the colors and everything and also if i say yell or long list you can see the entire list so enter program you are seeing right the colors and others and you can see the cursor where it is present similarly if i want to set a breakpoint if i say b21 so now after doing that did you see breakpoint and the beauty of ipython is that instead of saying breakpoints just bbb it is giving a numbering also now if i write more breakpoints when i am disabling and enabling i should give the numbers right that is bit harder in an pdb whereas in ipdb it's very easy so if i say breakpoint line 18 and breakpoint line 19 like that i set two breakpoints if i say list did you see so line 18 if i set breakpoint also as it is a comment line line 18 it's not coming it so line 19 came it and if i set a line breakpoint at line 20 did you see means though you set a breakpoint at a, a comment lines or even say this is a doc string right this is entirely i'm saying if i say like breakpoint at say line 7 now we see what will happen now did you all understand the difference between a comment line and a doc string for a doc string we can place a breakpoint also so but it makes no sense but try to understand it will process that's why we should be understanding and for others also you place the breakpoints 
in the order in which you placed it came in the same fashion if you want to disable something this is how disable say breakpoint 2 if you want to disable i can do ll did you see 2 was there but it was disabled so like you know so if i want to delete delete 3 uh, so if i want to sorry uh, uh, clear sorry not delete clear 3 if i do it will delete delete it so like that i can do okay after doing this setup now you want to check that how do you get the all the odd numbers so you want to just say like you know next see every time when you do a next so in pdb what you used to do you used to do the next and again you used to do the line to check the line number right now both became easy for you you just need to do n n n n that's it it will go to the next line and also show you visually if i say continue or c it will execute the entire program till the next breakpoint so it will so if i want to clear two it will clear say um this time if i say continue it will execute all the things till here and it is there and if i say what is each number it will show and if i join that like each number percentile to equal to zero i'm saying it's a condition so that's why it came here i want like odd numbers but it's not the thing if i say not equal to so and so that's correct so means like i need to check the other thing which is not equal to zero instead of equal to zero i should check for not equal to so now i understood the problem i just want to quit it so h if you do help so there are options to quit if i say quit it will come out of the session once it came out of it again i run so and this time we see so don't you think like ipdb is much better compared to pdb so in terms of visualization and help only this is more useful fine so now if i execute uh, i commented this line comment it and if i say like so python space c so and so now you understood all the values came right all the values you got till 99 again the same old thing so if you want to do the same thing uh, you know right this problem 101 if i do execute it post processing is same again so if i do python hyphen m and also whenever you are saying a break break point earlier you don't get a like this if i instead of like ipdb dot so and so if i do a break point if i do break point what will happen so like same as the earlier if i execute you get a ordinary pdb console but if you want ipdb console to come so instead of this you should go for uh, the environment variables so every uh, thing will have a environment variable you need to do the setup of this environment variable in your project repository so that is in production i'm saying so whenever you want to do all these things if i do this uh, this set environment set so in a line x you do export command so we in windows we do like this so you do this, this set command uh, set environment like that uh, and you can check it then it will do or else the best way is like you store in the environment variables so if you do the start menu and do environment variables that's the best way because if you do like this after this terminal is closed it will not be there so that's why they write in the project directory that's a different way of doing it. okay this is what is happening so based upon this i want to give you a small assignment so i wrote like uh, clearing a specific uh, breakpoint also I showed you what if you want to clear all the breakpoints you just need to explore how it works actually that's it so uh, these were the various ways of things i told right and one last thing like in the uh, exceptions so here also there is something called as hooks there is something called as you know uh, debug hook what do you mean by debug hooks and how they can help us? 
I told you, um, you write a function and you register to a hook. That is what you did even in the previous case. Here also, I do the same thing. If I go, first I created a uh, ordinary function, hello world or something. And I did like sys dot breakpoint hook is equal to that hello. There is no function call, just a function I registered. Now, if I go for the same old example earlier, what we did, you know, earlier what we did, I will do. So for that, like first, there are three ways we have, right? Uh, uh, first, I need to write numbers is equal to range of say, zero to 101. So that's what we have, numbers equal to. This is your Python program. Now for this, um, if I say like breakpoint somewhere, say in the starting or afterwards, if I place somewhere, Okay, hmm. if I execute Python space D so and so. Did you notice that it is executing and as you have registered this breakpoint, it will pause for a moment. I means like whenever the things happens, that would be the first statement to execute. So like this, if you want anything to be done, you can use it. But did you see, it is just coming to the interactive mode, so means uh, uh, PDB console, but this function is not executing. Means either if you do like this, or even IPDB also, it will not do. So this will be coming only for the breakpoint. Only for the breakpoint, you can get it. So gets called when breakpoint is called, and works only with these things. And it doesn't work with the PDB or IPDB. So here in this case, we notice that it's not coming. If I execute again, did you notice that? So the first statement was executed, right? So <clears throat> when our breakpoint was called, it is stopping there. So what you can do, better way is like, so instead of executing there, if you want to uh, do a stop there, maybe some pre-processing task or something. And then you do the same breakpoint or whatever you want to do. Say like, you know, um, IPDB if you want to take. And like IPDB dot set trace. If I execute it again, this time it executes. And whenever that particular thing comes, it passes. So, but like, no, I'm just giving one case, but like this, you can do whatever tasks you want whenever a breakpoint is called. So this is all about breakpoint, uh, this one. In the same fashion, so the last way is like using uh, uh, IDE-based debugging. IDE-based. So ID based debugging means the same program you can take again and you want to debug. Say like the same code I take and uh, this time I don't want to uh, debug with any module but I don't want to debug directly. So it means like I remove all these things. What are the debugging codes or all these things are there? In every Python uh, ID or thing there is something called as PyDevD which you don't even see. The moment you install Python uh, extensions, you will get it. So means like um, if you go uh, in VS Code, say there is an option called as extensions here. In the extensions, though you don't know, you will install. The moment you would write a .py file, so don't you see that it will recommend some installations? So that Python installations it will recommend. So if I say Python, I think Microsoft based is the most common across them. So that one will come and we can install it. As I have already installed it, I can directly use it. So one of this uh, thing is that about the debugging. When you want to execute, so till now what you're doing, you are going to the terminal and asking, right? So instead of you going, I think this is about the previous program, I should do. Instead of executing, you go to the term run. There are two things, start debugging, start without debugging. 
if i say start debugging or just f5 it is saying variable cannot be solved can you open this launch so uh, it is there some uh, it was already created so means for any python program or django program or anything it will come like this it's not a big deal for you to simply understand when you are running any program to run the same program how we need to do that's it so in the interact where you want to show so uh, is it in interact terminal or in a separate command prompt or like where you want to execute this is all set up this is will be done for the first time that's it after that if you do again f5 it will just go you see a new screen is coming for you so this is the terminal it is showing the output in instead of your traditional way of you doing on your own a new terminal is coming to help you and you see there are four sections here so what are the programs are there so in which all programs there were breakpoints it is showing all the programs which have the breakpoints so means like variables are there and all these things did you see that it is executing the entire program so the program execution was completed what sir i uh, you see here here it will start you see here it will start it started execution of course it gives a very big thing right so it would be irking for you to understand but over a period of time you will be comfortable so it is starting executing so maybe like my system is a bit slow but generally execution happens and you do and in this process if you want to place a breakpoint just you need to place a breakpoint like this you know it is not after the line before the line if you write click anywhere it will create a breakpoint did you see that it is creating breakpoints all the way you and the program d so it is showing like you know different things which are were already there where our breakpoints are there my previous history all these things it is story just to help me so these breakpoints i placed if i rerun again it will execute again so where our breakpoints are there it will pass there so when or it is passing i can see the variables and i can see the call stack and everything so this is one second like it is very slow my system today yeah something like it's broken but this is how it works you see now <clears throat> it was started and these breakpoints were there but they were disabled that's the reason you can see that it is going executing all and coming back so if i say again uh, breakpoint i placed it if i placed it and if i start running see python so or node js or whichever it is asking if you say python and if i start running it will start run and i place the active breakpoint when our execution comes there it should pass and also you will have when are you you need to go for a better you know uh, while loops or so and so where you can better understand how this process works but generally if you write like this breakpoints so it will execute you tend to wait for you and when are like it's waiting you can see the variables also which are is coming here so oh yeah so something problem with my uh, system and setup like so something with my system only today so else like it should work so where you can see all the breakpoints and everything. yeah now going for this list a list dot i p y n v i python notebook if i go to the list you can see that in python till now what are you have seen are data types what are the data types in python we have integers float uh, long and all these things are data types right boolean none and all these things just imagine you have uh, anything if but if you want to carry you need to have a data structure simple sense i will say why what is a data structure why we need it just imagine you have water so the same water you use for like washing clothes for drinking 
and for like gardening and for irrigation just imagine do you use the same container for for all the purposes no you cannot take a bucket of water and drink right so you will take a glass for drinking and if you want to wash the cloth you take a bucket and if you want to garden maybe like a, a tumbler or something but if you want to do irrigation maybe you take like a water tanker and take the water means just imagine the real world purpose of water itself so this is a individual product based upon the purpose you are using a particular container right so in the same fashion data also will be of different types but when you want to use for a particular purpose you need to structure in a particular way that is a data structure means so there were like multiple data structures like you know stack so queues all these things are data structures but python thought that at the very minimum everyone needs few data structures that's where they implemented four data structures mainly called as list sub table set and dictionary apart from these they have one more, apart from that they have few more okay <clears throat> so apart from that they have few more uh, but like slowly you will learn about them afterwards but for now you can see that these were the data structures and data types first let's focus on something called as a list here so list is represented using square braces this is like they created a new data structure which can take anything in square braces the moment you write anything square braces it take like that say like i created just like this it creates executes but it's just a empty brace so nothing will happen but if you take a variable and assign to it then you can notice that it is of particular type and if i say like hey what is this empty list you see it says it's an empty list and if i say type of this empty list did you see it's of type list so it is an empty list containing no values and at the same time so every list will have some length also right you can ask hey what is the length length of empty list zero because it has nothing now the same old thing i will do in it slightly different way i will store some values in the list you see i took a list containing these numbers and i'm trying to print the type of that and the values and the length so what are i did three previously in one shot i am to do this is also called as a list because it's storing the values in int quotes sorry in square braces numbers and the count is 5 means total number of characters or numbers infinite and list doesn't mean that it should store only numbers it can store any data types and it doesn't mean that all the value should be of same type if you see c language arrays it will store numbers but everything should be of same type right that's the point of an array but list is not like that not only homogeneous it can store non homogeneous means one integer one float one negative one long value one string so on like that even i stored some expression also and expression as a string and you see now every one you you can store like this if you give an expression it is converting the result and storing but if you give expression as a string string is an immutable it will come as this but did you see a list containing all those things like that in the same fashion hope you remember so we can have also multi dimensional lists what do you mean by dimension dimension means how you address a particular value address means indexing hope you remember indexing is there right for uh, when you go for strings also i told indexing means indexing starts with zero if you do for here also you can get the same thing zeroth index first index second index third index fourth index and this is all a single element right so that's the reason if i ask like say a ml ml means i got everything and if i say ml of 5 did you see that i got all the substring entire thing at one shot so that's why it's called as this thing what if you want inner values within it inner values is again what a list right again inner value is a list so it also supports indentation 
and if i go further so 0 1 2 this thing right if i ask like you know hey give me the second value how to get the second value here so if you want to get that value you need to give the things twice means first 5 and again then 3 did you see first 5 means this fifth fifth one within that you want to get the second one don't you see that you used two dimensions two dimensions were used right that's why it's called as a two dimensional list so if i give it is saying like hey if i ask hey what is the third value oh instead of asking second value i get third value right say if i give second value i got eight in the same fashion if i get like the third value if i ask hey what is the third value I get again a2 because again this third value is of two values means again in that if I want to get say some 9 or 10 I should specifically tell one more level of indentation so now we see here to get it 8 and 9 right I need to give one more 0 now we see here what will happen ml of 5 of 3 of 0 three dimensions used three dimensions used now you see you got the value so what is the maximum number of dimension used in this case three so that's why it's called as a three dimensional list now did you all understand three dimensional list So this is called as a multi-dimensional list. To be precise, a three-dimensional list. Hope it's clear. Fine. Now going further for the same ML and others, as I told you, if I check, so at the very first level, if I say total, what is the length? What it will say? How many elements it has? Is it ten elements it has, or five elements? At the first dimension, how many elements are there? That's what the total length. As this completely treated as a single element, totally when you ask, hey, what is the length? It says, I have only six characters. Hope it's clear. In the same fashion, and you know like how uh, it's working all the way I told you. Uh, and also like, you know, it supports the forward and reverse indexings also. Hope you remember, we earlier seen about the forward and reverse indexings. Till now we have seen forward indexing. So what are these? I can also now go for the reverse indexing. Means this is minus one entirely, minus two, minus three like that. And if you ask, hey, what are the values? You can give it. So same rules, whatever you learned in a string uh, slicing, the same rules works here. Means if you ask like, so minus five and one, both are same. If I do minus 5 or 1, both are same. If I say 5 or minus 1, both are same. So like that we can give. Assert means if it is wrong, it will throw an error, right? In the same fashion. This is how you understood indexing. And slicing also same rules works. It will go till the last value, but doesn't include the last value. If I say 1 to 4, means what here? 1 to 4 means from first position till the fourth position. So it will not include the fourth position. So it should add these three. Means 2, 3, 4.3. If I execute, did you see? 2, 3, 4.3. Similarly, 1 to 2 with a step of 2. Same old rules, whatever you did there, the same things works. I think I need not repeat again. Next, so mutability. So that's the most important thing. What do you mean by mutable? Mutable means one which is changeable, one it is ready to be changed. So what are the mutable objects till now we can see and what are the immutable objects? So till now you didn't focus on this concept of mutability and immutability. Now you are seeing. In Python, mutable objects are list, set and dictionary. So list is the first thing that you are observing which is mutable. Till now, whatever you notice, like int, float, string, boolean, all these things, string, 
So all these things are immutables. So how Python is immutable, sorry, list is mutable. What is the advantage that you are getting? So what do you mean by mutable means? Any object which supports change on it. Change on it means what? Means the address should not change, but the value should change. Now you see, let me take you one example. Say initially I gave number one is equal to one, two, three, four. I'm printing like, okay, what is the number type and address location? Of course, every object has these three, right? Now for the same object, I'm just changing the value means updating it. And I'm asking now, did you see number one is equal to something? So means like, don't you think it is overwriting? I'm saying overwriting. It's not changing. I'm saying it is overwriting. What do you mean by that? On the same variable, you are updating another value. Now, did you see that the address location is not same? Means the moment you are changing, did you see the address location was changed? So, okay. Let me go for one more example we have seen till now. Uh, I'm saying like, you know, strings are immutable. So I want to check that also. For checking that, I'm, I want to check like one thing. Okay, say like strings are immutable, right? Built in. So for number, you don't know how to edit it, but strings, it is visible. You can understand how to do it. Say I have a name called as Rashekar. If I print, hey, what is the name? It says like this. And in this name, if I want to get the indexing, sorry, slicing, if I say, hey, give me values from 0 to 3. Now we see what will happen. You got Rashekar. And if you see the first three characters, so it will go 0 till 3, means R E J. You got. Say for these three values, I want to change to something else called as, like, say, Tej. Say, Tej Shaker, I want to create. If I execute, did you see what happened? String object doesn't support item assignment. Means when you want to change, you cannot change it. So, but like, can I do like, so name is equal to Tej Shaker directly? If the same uh, name is there, Tej Shaker, I do. I can do right. So this is called as overwriting. If you are to overwrite, you see, I will show you the things before and after that. Anyhow, name will change. Apart from that, I will check, show you how the values are there. So say before also, what is the name? I'll print. And then after also, what is the name? I'll print. So this is concept is called as overwriting because did you see the name was changed? But also address location changes, right? So now we are slowly understanding what is the immutability. So all these things are doing the things, but they are not doing the in-place changes. In place, if you can do something, that's where it is called. So let me go for a simple list. Say my list one is equal to say one one two two three three four four. Okay, and if I go for my list one of say second value what do you mean by second value if i say f of if i execute did you see second value is 33 now if you see that my list so oh at the same time i want to uh, do the change and also print right so let me show that three things i want to take this uh, particular value uh print of f of so my list one is equal to my list one type you want to get the type of it right sorry id you already know the type there is no point address location and if you want to say my list one of the second value instead of that say i want to say like two because Python don't have any problem with the data types. So for the list, you give it different types also fine. It will work. Did you see now what happened? So in the first initially, before it was one address location, different values. You change the things, 
Did you see the address locations were not changed? So address location is same in both the cases. So this is called as in place changes. So this is called as in place change, right? This is called as a mutability. Any object supporting in place changes means this one. So did you see now? And similarly, if I go for like my list two is equal to say like I have one, one, two, two. Within that I have three, three. Um, within that I have four, four. And uh, within that I have five, five. Assume that deep within it something I have. So that's where like I need to check, right? So now you see now, if I say my list two of, how do you address to the inner values? This is zero. So that's what right indexing. Zero, one, and this entirely is like two. Do you agree? And within that, if you want to go further, so within that again, you have zero, and this entire thing is like one, right? One. And within that, you want to go further. So you have zero, and this is entirely like one. And within that, it has a single value, which is like zero again. Hope you understood how it is there. Now, if I say like, you know, uh, two of, so one of one, if I do like this, now you observe the difference. I want to take the value and also get the address location, right? So type of, sorry, not type, uh, ID, ID of my list two. You see now what happened? You got something. And now you see, I want to update this value. Say instead of 55, say I'm saying like 55. Five. Okay, 55 five something error. 